Hello students, this is Professor Shrenik Shah from your very own channel Physic for NEET and JWE exams. Guys, I'm sure you have watched our many videos. This is one of the new videos which I am giving you. And I'm sure you like our content. But many of you do not subscribe to our channel and do not hit that like button. Because of which we are not sure about how this content is received by you. Whether it is good or bad, whatever is the review, guys, please provide us on the comment section. And if you like the video, please hit that like button and do subscribe our channel. That will motivate us to make more and more video for all of you. So guys, let's go for the video. So guys, on Instagram account, when we ask you a question about what exactly is the next video you want me to make. And I've got n number of replies and thank you so much for that. That helps me to understand what is your requirement and accordingly I can make new videos for all of you. So guys, in today's video, we are going to learn a new topic which has been asked by so many number of students to explain it in the form of a video. So guys, we are going for the topic known as Earth's Magnetism. Yes guys, Earth's magnetism or earth as a magnet yes guys earth's magnetism or earth as a magnet now we need to first understand what is the reason why do we have earth as a magnet or why earth behave as a magnet guys to be very frank we do not know a practical reason for which we can be 100 percent sure that this is the one reason because of which earth behaves as a magnet but multiple scientists have given multiple theories and two, we, can, uh, we can also say that that multiple theories have been logical and it might be possible that almost all the theory or some of the theories cumulatively behave help earth as to behave as a magnet. So guys one of the theory is that the electrons which are present on the surface of earth is rotating with the rotation of the earth about its own axis due to which they also produce something called as a magnetic field and so earth behave as a magnet yes that's one of the reasons another reason which some scientists have also given is the emission given from the sun to the surface of earth you know also possess certain ions because of which our atmosphere gets charged and because of that our earth have magnetic field surrounded by it or you can say inside it because of which the ions, the rotation of that ions provide us the magnetic field. Yes, that's one of the reasons. The third reason which we can say is given by many scientists is in the core of the earth, you when you know when you go inside the earth, there are so many materials which are nothing but natural magnets. Yes, and so when you accumulate them together, we get nothing but earth behaving like a magnet. So guys, to be very frank, we can say we do not know the exact reason for this. But if you go with my suggestion or in my opinion, I would say the first reason which I gave you sounds pretty much logical that because Earth has a pool of electrons and Earth revolve with the uh, electrons carrying it. So it basically the electron revolving around a center or around a point or a line and that makes them grow, provide us the magnetic field of the Earth which we can say that because of which Earth behaves like a magnet. So guys, now we need to understand what is Earth's magnet as per our syllabus. So please try and understand. If we consider this as our Earth, I can say if I draw a vertical line which divides the Earth or the circle into two equal halves, I can call this line as a geographical axis. Yes guys, the geographical axis is the line passing through the center of the earth and if you take say a knife like object and make the length of the knife parallel to the line and try to cut the earth into two equal halves, I can say that is going to be your geographical plane. So basically the axis is the line and if you have a plane passing through this line cutting the two Earth, cutting the earth into two equal halves is nothing but the geographical plane. Okay, so geographical axis is nothing but 
the line passing to the center and for the north and south and this north and south is also known as geographical north and geographical south okay now if i draw a line perpendicular to this geographical axis then i can say that line is called as equator yes guys it's called as equator and here i can say if i have again a knife for which this time the length is parallel to the equator the line of equator and if i try to cut the earth into two equal halves i can say that plane is called as equatorial plane you can easily make it out that as geographical plane divides the earth into two hemispheres which is either on east and west okay or vice versa and the equatorial plane divides the earth into northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere so that is basically the idea of the plane okay now practically our earth when it behaves as a magnet as i can say does not lie exactly with the geographical north and geographical south it is slightly inclined to it which means if i draw the magnet it is going to be somewhat over here like this so basically if i try to draw a line passing through the center and through the magnet i can call this line as magnetic axis so the geographic axis is basically the vertical line and the magnetic axis we can say it's slightly inclined to the geographical axis but yes again you can have a plane by which you can divide the earth into two equal halves if you have a plane parallel to the magnetic axis so you can divide the earth into two equal half but it will definitely be not be perfectly east and west okay because there is some angle between the geographic axis and the magnetic axis this angle which you can find between the geographic axis and the magnetic axis actually is not a constant practically it keeps on changing with time to time and space to space but yes for now we can remember this angle as 11.5 degree yes that as a fact you can take it so 11.5 degree if i say right now if you try to measure it we might not get the same value but this is given in your book so you just have to remember it and you can call this angle as the angle of declination okay so this angle is the angle between the geographic axis and the magnetic axis so i hope this part is clear to you now we go ahead with the understanding of the magnetic axis where i can say the magnetic axis have the north and south exactly opposite of what the geographic axis provide us which means the geographical north actually possess the magnetic south yes guys the one the polar which the one pole which we assume that it is north pole practically if you talk about magnetic wise we can say it's actually a south pole so this is a magnetic south pole obviously when the opposite end is going to be here as a magnetic north pole so we have guys gs stands for geographic south we have gn which stands for geographic north we have ms which stands for magnetic south and we have mn which stands for magnetic north so guys i hope this part is first thing clear to you because this is very 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 important you need to understand that you have two axes geographic axis and the magnetic axis and there is a fixed angle between them which basically changes from time to time and space to space but for now you have to remember it as a fact okay that angle is 11.5 degree and we have geographic north in the geographic axis in the similar side we will have magnetic south so basically you can say the magnetic property and the geographical property is exactly opposite i'm going to tell you why this thing has happened but i would request you to first copy this down okay
so guys i hope you have already copied this entire part and now you also need to understand that this 11.5 as i said it is called as angle of declination so you can define the angle of declination as the angle between the geographic meridian and the magnetic meridian now guys now you must be thinking that how come i am just talking about meridian i didn't say this word before yes guys i already mentioned what is geographic meridian and magnetic meridian is but i didn't mention that i'm talking about the geographic meridian and magnetic meridian remember the plane which passes through the geographic axis which can divide into divide the earth into two equal half yes guys that plane is nothing but the geographic meridian similarly the plane which passes through the magnetic axis which can divide the earth into two equal half that is also called as magnetic meridian so basically you can say the angle between geographic meridian and the magnetic meridian is going to be called as angle of declination which practically changes from time to time and space to space so if you google it right now or if you search online you might find different values at different places and different values for different time but for our book for our knowledge for our fact we have to remember the value as 11.5 degree so guys i hope this part is clear to you okay so now we go ahead with the understanding of how we have something called as a horizontal magnetic field and the vertical magnetic field of earth okay so let's try and understand this now definitely i hope you understand one simple thing that the magnetic lines of force is always from the north to south outside the magnet so basically i can say the lines of force are going to come out like this will go all over the earth and will enter the south pole like this so this is how the direction is going to be of the magnetic lines of force from the surface of earth and definitely you can have n number of lines because if you remember the magnetic flow or magnetic lines of force ka diagram you can draw n number of lines over here correct now we need to understand how this entire thing works for us as a human being on the surface of earth so try and understand this over here i'm drawing a separate diagram for it so if i talk about earth over here and for time being i'm assuming that there is no angle of declination which means this is my geographic and magnetic south and this is my geographic and magnetic north okay so for time being it's simple for us to understand this so now if i draw one magnetic line of force like this and now let's say we as a human being are standing on the equator okay so i'm sure you understand that though we assume or it feels us that we are standing vertically top on the surface of the ground and the ground being horizontal practically we do not know where the axis is because with respect to earth we can say we are vertical but if we understand that we are standing on this side of the earth don't you think we are actually standing like this right so we are actually standing like this the horizontal and here the earth's magnetic field is actually going like this so when we are like this the earth's magnetic is like this so if i take myself and make myself like this i guess the earth's magnetic is like this correct which means guys for me right now when i'm standing on the equator say the magnetic lines of force are either going to go like this okay like this or like this or if i talk about this is north and this is south then definitely north to south so it's going to be like this so whenever we solve numericals please try and remember that that we always face the north that is what you need to take as a reference while solving any numerical or mcqs okay guys so here i can say when the man is standing on the surface of equator the electric sorry the magnetic field the magnetic lines of force is passing like this now if i consider this as a magnetic lines of force i'm just telling it right this for you i can say from the surface of the horizontal earth for me it is the horizontal right it's parallel to the surface of earth which means for equator the magnetic field is completely horizontal 
and that we call it as a BH, horizontal magnetic field or horizontal component of magnetic field. Second thing we have, if I am standing on south or north pole, let's say I am standing on the south pole. Then I can say it is almost like that the lines of force are entering from my head and going from the toe to the ground. Something like this. Correct? Which means with respect to the ground, it is perpendicular. So for me, it is going to be vertical. In case of North Pole, definitely it is going from my toe to my head. Like this. It is still perpendicular to the ground, guys. Which means... For the North Pole or the South Pole, which is actually now geographic and magnetic wise, the vice versa of it, you need to remember that. I can say the magnetic field is only vertical, which means for poles, the magnetic field is only vertical. So now can I say it means for every other point apart from the equator and the poles, we have the magnetic field, some component horizontal, some component vertical. Now to measure that, to find that, we have a very simple instrument called as dip magnetic needle. Yes, dip magnetic needle is something like a magnetic compass which is not based on a horizontal surface but it is pivoted to a point and it can rotate like this. So basically if I consider this as my magnetic needle, I will pivot it over here like this. So it can rotate like this. So this is going to be my dip magnetic compass. It can correspond to the vertical magnetic field also as well as the horizontal magnetic field. But if you are using the compass, the magnetic compass, because it is placed like this, it can respond only to the horizontal magnetic field and never the vertical magnetic field. Correct? And that means if you want to find the direction, the geographical direction on the surface of Earth, you don't need to worry about that vertical field. You just have to worry about the horizontal and that's why we use compass for day-to-day -day life for finding the direction. But when we are talking about the horizontal and vertical component, we need both the components and that's why we need something called as dip magnetic needle. So now when I use a dip magnetic needle, I get a diagram something like this. So this is how the magnetic needle gets arranged, which is pivoted at this point. Okay, so if I say this is how it is arranged like this. It means the resultant magnetic field is in this direction. Okay, and that means I can draw the B magnetic field in this direction. I should actually write B bar. Now, if I draw on the x axis and the y axis, I can say I can resolve this B into two components. One is BH, the horizontal component of magnetic field, and the other is going to be. BV, the vertical component of the magnetic field, which means if I take the angle between B and BH as theta, this theta is called as angle of inclination or dip. Yes, guys, I'm writing this over here just to make sure that you don't get confused. Here, the angle of declination was the angle between the geographic meridian and the magnetic meridian which is fixed right now for you but practically changes from time to time and space to space and the angle of inclination or the angle of dip is defined as the angle between the resulting magnetic field at a given point with its horizontal component okay guys so we have bh and b each angle as theta so now definitely i hope you understand from this that i can write bh as b cos, cos theta and dv as b sin theta yes guys which means if i take the ratio of the two i get tan theta as dv upon dh and if i square and add them i can actually find the resultant magnetic field and using that i can have b square is equal to bv square plus bh square out of which this theta will keep on changing and as we say for equator it is only horizontal which means the vertical magnetic field becomes zero. Now I hope you understand the sine theta is zero only when you have theta as zero degree. Which means when you 
place this equator, sorry, the magnetic needle, the word dip magnetic needle at the point of equator, you will find that it is completely aligned horizontal. Yes, and that point of time I can say the B is equal to BH, which means theta is zero. So I can also say for equator, theta is zero degree. And similarly, if you take it to the pole, definitely B will be only be vertical, which means BH is going to be zero. Now I'm sure you know, cos theta zero is possible only when theta is 90 degree. And that means for vertical, theta is going to be 90 degree. So guys, this is a very important concept and this is very important for you to understand all the terms, all the formulas, because you're going to use this multiple times in your MCQs and your numericals. So I'm sure this video is going to help you. If you like this video, please hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel. This is going to motivate us for making more and more video. And if you want any video to be specially made for certain topic of physics, please do write in the comment section and we will try to make those videos as soon as possible. So that is going to help you in learning physics with a lot of fun. Okay guys, so please copy this. So that is going to help you out. Thank you.